Cricket on the Sportsmax Zone. Haley Matthews again led from the front, but it was not enough to secure a historic series win as West Indies women went down to Australia by 47 runs in the third and final T20 International on a Thursday morning, Caribbean time, in Brisbane. An injured Matthew struck 79 in the Windies' pursuit of 191 for victory, but the Caribbean woman never recovered from her dismissal and were eventually bowled out for 143 with one ball remaining. Alia Allen was the only other Windies batter to pass 20, stroking four fours in her knock of 26. Darcy Brown and Ashley Gardner were the pick of the Aussie bowlers with three wickets each. Early in the match, Talia McGrath and Elise Perry with 65 and 40 respectively pushed the host to 190 for nine. Shamila Connell was the best Windies bowler with three for 25. Let's hear now from Matthews who secured her eighth consecutive play of the match award. It was a bit tougher um, to start out there today. I think the wicket was a bit slower um, and probably had to kind of change the areas of the field I was accessing today and go a bit more leg side. I think the last five overs we bowled probably went for a few too many. I think we did a really good job in the middle um, to get a couple of wickets and slow down the scoring rate. Um, and then obviously that last 10 overs when we were batting, we kind of crumbled and fell apart there. All right, team, so something to smile about. We'll start on a positive note. Haley Matthews continues to, you know, entertain us. And I'm in awe of her performances. She walked away from this, um, ma these matches against Australia as play of the series. And you know what bothers me is the fact that she was able to do this with an injury. We have other bats women on the team and they're fit and they're doing well. And what's going on? Well, here's what I think, first of all. I think today's knock from Haley Matthews was a greater demonstration of her quality than the 99 or the 132. Part of the reason for this, she had the quad issue, and it was clear that that was hampering her movement at the crease. Still, she was able to take it to the Australian bowlers. The other aspect of it is that the Australians were a lot better this time around than they were when she scored 132. Um, clearly, they made the adjustments in terms of not giving Haley Matthews as much room um, on or outside the line of the off stump, and they tried to get the ball swinging back into her, forcing her to play more leg side. And uh, as soon as she got her eye in, earlier she had a few massive strikes and, and missed completely. But as soon as she got her eye in, she was able to find the boundary with some amount of regularity. This was a high quality knock. And I continue to say it, Lance and Mariah, and I don't think a lot of people understand the quality of Haley Matthews as a women's international batter. And I've said it before, she is not yet, well, overall, career-wise, performing at the level that her talent suggests that she can. She has gone a long way in 2023 in improving on that and definitely in this Australia series, demonstrating a lot closer to what she is capable of, but I don't think she is quite there yet, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah, and, and as a track and field man yourself, um, Ricardo, I want to highlight the fact that we're talking here about a two-sport international. She won two silver medals in the javelin at the Carifta Games for Barbados, and then a gold medal, and that gold medal coming just the year before she was a top performer for the West Indies in their uh, World Cup triumph in 2016. So this is a, a genuine athlete, and I agree with you 100%, Ricardo, that um, her career statistics at the moment don't show what her real ability is because her batting average in T20s is still in the mid-20s, I think, and uh, we see what she can deliver. Australia are the undisputed world number one in women's cricket, the reigning world champions in women's uh, T20 cricket, 
and uh, the fact that they had no answer for three consecutive matches to Haley Matthews tells you that this is a batter that is genuinely world class. Right. And the fact that she was player of the match twice well, and three times, three times, yeah. and player of the series yeah. in a series that her team lost says mountains for, want, for her performance in this series. And team, I want to get your views on this because earlier today, Haley Matthews in the post-match press conference was asked about this. And to me, it really stood out. And I feel that's the reason why we're not seeing the best of her yet. She was asked if she always feels as if the result is dependent on how she performs. If she feels pressured that, you know, she really has to go out there and deliver else the team has no chance, right? She responded, you know, she said, yes, she understands that she has to make a big impact. It can get stressful, but that's what she has to do as a leader. And I find when I watch Haley Matthews in her club competitions, when, you know, she can just go and be free and be herself, I see a different Haley Matthews versus the one that has the title of captain and has to ensure that she puts up solid scores in order to make her team competitive and help them get over the line. I think that's an area she's improved on significantly, actually, since she has become captain. I, I think um, before she became captain, I find that there would be a lot of reckless strokes in, in, in a lot of her innings, and she wouldn't be performing at the level. But since she's taken on the responsibility, I've seen a marked difference in how she approaches a lot of these knocks. But I also want to make the point Lance and Mariah, this is important for me because I also want our viewers to understand the significance of what Haley Matthews did in this three-match series. First sure. of all, she is the first player in women's T20 internationals to score over 300 runs in a three-match series. So that in itself a record and is significant. But that for me has to be one of the greatest performances by any West Indies batter, man or woman, in any series. And I'm going to compare across formats now because I am rivaling this performance with what Brian Lara did in Sri Lanka in 2001 when he scored 688 runs in a three-match test series. Um, what Viv Richards did in 1976 when the West Indies went to England and he scored 829 runs in that five-match test series. That's the level that I think this three-match performance of Haley Matthews um, is, is equivalent to, um, or certainly, without a doubt, is in the discussion. Because, as you pointed out, Lance, you are talking about undisputed number one ranked Australia in T20 cricket. You're talking about an Australian lineup full of depth. Um, they probably have the most depth in all of women's cricket, which is part of the reason they are number one in the world. And for Haley Matthews to go to Australia, score over 300 runs, win player of the series in every single, uh, player of the match yes. in, every um, in game. all three games, and then get player of the series, I think has to rank as one of the greatest batting performances in a series by any West Indian player, man or yeah. woman. And now that you have referenced the Brian Lara effort in Sri Lanka and the Ivy Richards effort in England back in 1976, we have to remember that Muralitharan during that series was unplayable to almost every batsman in the world. Yes. And the Sri Lankans completely dominated the series. And for BC Lara to have scored over 600 runs in that series tells you that he was in a significantly higher class than any of his teammates, for sure. But on the strength of his performance, um, you know, it, it was something special and memorable even to this day. And I think I agree with you, Ricardo, that what we've seen Haley Matthews achieve in this series, 310 runs in a T20 series against the world's best teams, um, is, is in that, is in that cl yeah, class. If discussion. you put it on a scale, yes. it will, the, the, the weight will be similar. Um, I know the Aussies' bowling may have been hampered a bit because Elise Perry, who is an outstanding all-rounder, has an injury and hasn't bowled. She's playing in the series as a batter. But even without her, the Australian bowling lineup is very, very outstanding. Yeah. Best in the world, it I think. It was to the point where they were so confident to switch up their team in the second T20. Mm. Yeah. That's why, you know, I felt as if 
they didn't think that West Indies women were, would have been able to beat them in that second T20. So they brought in different bowler, bowlers. They played with the team a bit. Yeah, but also you... It, as Lance also pointed out as well, you just need to look at what the other batters, um, and let's be honest, I, I know the question has been asked quite a lot, why the other batsmen in, or batters in the West Indies women's side are not as consistent. My simple answer is they don't have the quality um, to be consistent at that level. Um, and so that's a large part of the reason they are not. Haley Matthews has the quality. Um, and, and, we saw and a bit of that from Steph as well, the one time she made that. Well, Steph is a star. Yeah. Steph, Steph is but a today genuinely I'm upset at her high quality Because of that player. shot that she played today? So here's the thing with Stefani Taylor for me. I have found that whenever Stefani Taylor has to be or feels she has to be the aggressor, she is not as potent. And it's part of the reason why she bats so well with Haley Matthews and when Deandra Dottin was in the side, why she batted so well with Deandra Dottin. Because when she has those types of players who are capable of dominating and she is the anchor, I find that she is comfortable playing that role. Yes. She is not a big hitter. Um, is, is Stefani Taylor, at least not in my opinion. She's a player who needs to build an innings and get herself in before she starts playing those big shots. And I think after Haley Matthews got out, um, she probably felt that she needed to be the one to take on the Australian bowling. And I think it was just too soon in her innings. And, and so I would like to cut her some slack because those situations can be extremely difficult especially when you haven't been in them for some time and sh she would not have been in them for some time. And it's different if you are setting a target as well, because if you are setting a target as well, you kind of have a target in your head. We want to get to 150, 160, but now when you know you're chasing 190, it is a little bit different. Yeah. Mm. I want to make a quick point uh, to just go back quickly to the balance of the team and the fact that Haley Matthews needs batting support for this West Indies team to, to flourish. Um, and uh, to highlight the fact that her outstanding 310 aggregate in this series um, tells us a lot about the difference between her performance and the others. Because in that same Brian Liara series that you referenced, um, when he scored over 600 runs, the West Indies had Ram Narissau and Chris Gale, Carl Hooper, and, and very good batsmen there. Yes. But they were unable to score anywhere close to what Brian Lara had scored in the same way that the other batters uh, in this series haven't been able to even touch the, the aggregate score that uh, Haley Matthews has, has put on the stat sheet. Yeah, and, and I also, I, I'm glad you brought up that point, Lance, because I was looking at the makeup of this team. I, I know the job is difficult for the selectors. It, as a selector, I... I don't know that I would want to be a selector because sometimes I feel as if you, you just can't get it right unless the team is winning all the time. But Natasha McLean in the women's CPL was only outscored by Haley Matthews and Deandra Dottin as West Indies players. Kaisia Knight, 31 years old, has been around a while, also had a good women's CPL. Um, I don't know if it is that the selectors went for a squad that could go across both the T20s and the 50-over matches in Australia, but I would like to think that either Natasha McLean or Kaisia Knight could have been strongly considered. In my opinion, they are more aggressive bat yes. batters. They are better for the top of the order. And I would have gone with one of them, opened with one of them. Kaisia Knight can also keep... I would not be looking at Rashada Williams for T20 cricket because, in my opinion, she is not a T20 batter. And it is shown by the fact that she is a traditional opener and she is batting all the way down at 7 or 8 or whatever it is. So, in my opinion, you don't need Rashada Williams in a T20 setup. Shemaine Campbell can wicket keep. If you bring in Kaisia Knight or Natasha McLean, they both can wicket keep. And I would have preferred to go with one of those, give them the gloves or give the gloves to Shemaine Campbell and Rashada Williams would not have a spot in that team for me. And Gajnabi, 
I like the look at her, but I think she could be even more effective in around that number five, number six position yeah. rather than in the opening position. So I would consider those changes um, if I was in a position, if I were in a position to be helping to select this yeah. West Indies women's team. I like the idea of Natasha and Kaisi and I, but on that note, team, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we have a lot more of Sports to Talk.